Good morning, good evening. How everybody's doing today? Uh, this is Jabril Khalif Al Sadat with the Mark Hunter Brooks. We're back once again with a podcast topic about uh, how do you define success, right? And uh, we're going to talk a little bit to find out what does it mean to be successful. So, first, I'm going to give it to Mark and he's going to give you a little talk about. How will you do? How do you define success? Go ahead, Mark. Oh, boy. Well, and I was telling Jabril offline, I said, I'm going to play Uncle Mark like I'm talking to my daughter uh, about things. And I, and I think this is kind of interesting, you know, with parents talking to their children, what what do they talk to them about? And there's a, a lot of different things to say about success. And we talked a lot about it uh, in the last podcast with, you know, what's so bad about being poor is that there's different types of poor being poor, being poor and being wealthy, just like there's different types of intelligence. And so there's different types of success as well. And uh, we need to keep that in mind as we're going through our life. So this is kind of the lead in to some of the things I, I wanted to say. And for those people, this is kind of like one of the foundational things for this podcast is, you know, a house built on sand is you need to build a strong foundation in your life to really be successful in your lifetime. And so this is some of the things that we'll talk about in, in the podcast today. But the just one analogy I wanted to, to throw out is to think of a pyramid. And we're going to come back to that uh, in a second with four corners going up to a point. And that's going to be the pyramid of your life. And it, it has stones in it that, that you're going to put in that pyramid as you as you grow older. Um, but I want you to think about the top of the pyramid is not the culmination of your work life in your 40s or 50s, which is like the height of, of your um, uh, influence and whatever in, in your working experience. Think of it as your 80s. The point of the pyramid is your 80s. And that's what's going to define whether you're a success or not. And the, the four corners or the four uh, edges of that pyramid are your family and your friends on two opposite sides and your community and your coworkers on two other sides. And those are the, the things that, that you have to think about when you're building the foundation of that pyramid. You have to think about your relationships with your family, especially when you're young in your childhood, your relationships with your friends as, as you go to school, to elementary school, junior high, high school, and, and then to college. If you go to college or to a trade school or to the military, you think of the friends that you, you create. Then as you get out and work, uh, you think of your coworkers, but as you're also bringing in income, you think of, of the community as well. But don't think of trying to rise to great power and, and influence and wealth and authority in a few years. Think of that over the course of two decades, is that if you start in your 20s doing this building, look to maximize your, your uh, working career and your community career in your 40s. And you're going to lay this foundation with your family, your friends, your community, and your coworkers, starting in your childhood building your relationships with people, but you want to build strong relationships, a strong foundation with them and, um, and be cognizant of keeping those relationships as you grow older, because that foundation is going to help you as, as you, especially when you take risks in business or take risks, you know, in, in whatever you're working, you're doing, you want that foundation of, of uh, support from other people around you to help you in case you have any problems. And uh, for people that are um, involved with the stock market and uh, they do trading and stuff, there's something that they can put into their trades called a stop loss. And what that means is, is that if the market goes down a certain point, your, your stocks will automatically be sold. So there'll be a limit to how much money 
you'll lose on your investment. And this is something that people who do investing use to minimize their, their losses. And it's the same thing. I'd like to apply that to, to life as well in that the relationships you build are your stop loss. So that if you have problems, you know, in life, you have friends that can support you. If you have problems in business, you have coworkers in the community and your family and your friends to support you. And you, you won't fall as far if you have strong relationships. So think about that. But then also, as you think about uh, things that uh, or choices that you have, decisions that you need to make as you're going through your life, think of the top of that pyramid in your 80s. And you say, how, how will it look in my 80s if I make this decision now, if I do this thing, if I don't do this thing? Because in your 80s, you're 20 years beyond your working life. And what you have is your family and your friends and the relationships you've developed with your community and your coworkers. That's what's really important. And you don't want to throw that away um, while you're working. You don't want to throw away those relationships because at some point, you're going to be laid off or you're going to retire. And some of those working relationships and the things that you've developed, you know, the contacts in business or whatever, they're all going to go away and people are going to move on. Organizations are going to move on and you're going to be retired. And you have your relationships that you're going to spend with the rest of your life. So think about developing that in your teens and in your 20s. Think about your 80s and how you're going to live your life then. And it's not related to business. It's not related to wealth, power, influence, authority, celebrity, beauty, any of these things are all material. Think of your relationships with other people. And that's what I think is most important as, as you want to define your success. So with that, I've, I've said my piece. <laughs> Well, what you said was apropos, especially when you're talking about the, the pyramid, right? It's almost yeah. like the Pythagorean triangle, right? Mm -hmm. When things come, if you want to get biblical, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, right? You know, you have soul, spirit, and matter. A lot of things come in three. Three is a powerful number, right? So that fits in exactly the same. But when we talk about success, right, what are we talking about? We're talking about the accomplishment of an aim of purpose or person or thing that achieves a desired aims or attaining prosperity, right? The prosperity part, you know, can be is definitional. You know, prosperity can mean a lot of things besides a lot of money. But what does it mean to be in successful in the 21st century in America, right? Most people look at being success as having a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Having mm -hmm. a lot of dough, cash, bag, Whatever you want to call it, whatever whatever um, uh, colloquialism you want to call it now, that's what people say. If you have a lot of money, you're successful. And if you're successful, you must be smart. Well, there must not have been a lot of the rich people I worked with because they weren't too bright not to knock them, but they weren't, right? They were just people who were focused, mm -hmm. who was ruthless, who was determined to get as much money as they wanted to get, and they never satisfied with as much as they had because they were always wanted more. And that's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what you should consider success, right? Success should be if you were married 40 years. That's a success, right? Success is that if you was on a job and you did it well, that's success. Mm -hmm. We all have little pieces of success in our lives every day, but we don't want to acknowledge it. And, and, and that's why we have so much depression, drug use, alcohol use, and, 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 and deprivation in our society because we don't want to see the little success that we have. Raising a child to be a, a, a good citizen in the country isn't a success. You know, I used to say, you know, long as my child don't grow up killing somebody and eating them, I'm a success. The killing part I can take, but the eating, yeah, that's a little bit too much, right? <laughs> so success can be a lot of little stuff, right? But we have gotten away from it. And we have to ask ourselves, why? Why have now we just say, oh, Mark Zuckerberg has $79 billion. He must be smart, right? Even though he didn't finish Harvard. Oh, Bill Gates has you know, almost $120 billion. He must be smart, you know? 
Oh, Jeff Bezos, right? He's almost a $200 billion man. He must be a genius. Everybody want to hear what he has to say. No, everybody really don't want to hear what he has to say. Everybody want to know, how did you get $200 billion? So maybe I can get $200 billion, right? That's what it's all about now. It's not that we think these people are so smart. It's that you were smart enough to get, you know, X amount of billion dollars. So I want to listen to you. So maybe you can give me the secret. You know, the, the old philosopher stone, right? Uh, how to turn all these metals into gold. Yeah. Unfortunately, they have no secret. There is no philosopher stone, right? They have no way of turning tin and the copper into gold, right? All they were, they came along at a certain time. They were opportunists. They were ruthless. And they made their money. And anybody got in their way, they rolled over. I'm not knocking them for that. That is life. That is the human experience. But we have what we do is when we see that our lives are not like Zuckerberg's or B or Bezos or 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 Gates. We say we must be a failure, mm -hmm. and that leads to depression. That leads to drug abuse. Mm -hmm. That leads to all different other kind of abuses because we think that you know in America. We have this American dream that's really an American nightmare because it's a lie. They tell you as long as you, you know, go to school, get an education, work hard, play by the rules, you can move ahead, which is a lie. And, you know, Mark is reading a book, which I had read by uh, Professor Mark Sandel called The, the Tyranny of the Meteorocracy, right? That, and he's not the only book. There's other books that is right there. There's other books that have been written that tells the same thing about how it's a lie to tell people, you know, just because you get a, you go to school, get a college, you're going to afford your college degree, and you get out here and you're going to make a lot of money. They say that, you know, about, I forgot the percentage of, of people in Ivy League, Ivy League school are rich. They belong to a certain class of people. You know, they have legacy, which nobody talk about. They're always talking about affirmative action. But if I went to Harvard, even my son, if he's dumb as a brick, I could get him into Harvard. And especially if I put my name on a building. Yeah. He can be dumber than a bag of rocks, but he can get in and he can <laughs> get a degree. Right? So we don't talk about legacies. There's legacy. You know, if you read biographies of people, you'll realize, oh, man, his father went to Harvard. Oh, he went to Harvard. And the grandson went to Harvard. Oh, they all must be smart. No, they're not. Right? So, you know, we need to, to, to not feel bad about ourselves and say, oh, my life has been a failure because I haven't gotten this. Or I have a lot of people say, by 40, I should have certain things. Who says? Why do you put that pressure on yourself? Why can't you just live your life and try to be happy? You know, why? Because you compare yourself to somebody else who has a lot more. You can consider yourself unsuccessful, but you never look down at somebody who has a lot less and say, oh, I'm more successful than that person. You know, not even that you should do that. But I'm saying is people always compare themselves to somebody who has more and then they feel bad about themselves because they don't have the same thing. We're not all supposed to have the same thing. We all can't be rich. Because if we're all rich, who do we compare ourselves to and who's poor? Because if you look at it, if we're all rich, we're really not rich. <laughs> you know, we just all have the same stuff. So, you know, these inequities in society are always there, but we cannot compare ourselves to it. There used to be a, a saying a long time ago, which I haven't heard in years, don't keep up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. right? Which is it's good common sense, you know? Try to do the best that you can do to make your life right. Success comes from persevering during failure. Mm -hmm. My life has been full of failures. I have had four different different uh, businesses, and they all went out of business. Not because I was stupid or dumb or couldn't work it, because I had lost it. I, I, I didn't have any capital. But that's all right. I learned from my failures because you learn more from your failures than from your successes, mm -hmm. right? I kept on trying. I kept on working. I kept on doing, you know, and I became a success because I understood what failure meant. Mm -hmm. Failure meant that no matter what happened to me, I was going to keep on going. 
That is the true thing of success, right? Success is when you're in a marriage, and even though the marriage has problems and stuff like that, you keep on going. Sometimes you can't, but then sometimes you can, right? It's just the perseverance of life. I learned that when I was in the military, right? That getting through certain uh, uh, hard hard parts of life or hard parts of the military had more to do with mental strength than physical strength. Mm -hmm. When your physical strength gave out, your mental strength would push you through, would forge you through. You know, a lot of times in the military, and if you see, you know, Navy SEALs and all this other stuff, you notice that, you know, they uh, when you see boot camp, that, you know, they, 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 they try these people, they're yelling, they're screaming at them, they're making them feel exhausted, they're pushing them and pushing them till they, till they physically they can't make it anymore because they're trying to make them quit. They're trying to tell them, they're trying to see if they're mentally tough, right? And mentally tough is the only thing it means is having perseverance, right? Being willing to go part past that, that breaking point that physically you can't make it anymore. When I was a chef, I used to work 16 hours a day. I remember one Thanksgiving, I was working in uh, the hospital. It used to be Presbyterian now uh, at the time, and I was a sous chef. And it was over the holidays, during the Thanksgiving holiday. So the executive chef came in and he asked me, he said, well, we got to not only feed, you know, the help of uh, the nurses and doctors overnight, but we also had to feed uh, the, the people in the hospital. And we had to give them turkey dinners and stuff like that. So he said that even though I had came in seven o'clock in the morning, I think it was seven to six o'clock in the morning, right? I came in six o'clock Wednesday morning to work because I was supposed to, you know, help get out the breakfast and help get out the turkey dinner, you know, the 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 dinner, the lunch, and get ready, you know, for all these turkeys for the following day for Thanksgiving. So we had dressing, turkey, uh, uh, big steam jackets full of, you know. 100 gallons of, of gravy, you know, all this stuff, you know, pies and all this stuff. We had to get all this food out, right? Well, when he asked the cooks to do it, the cooks were like, Grandma, you know, I got family coming over. So I said, you know what? Even though I had a family and stuff like that, I was like, I'll do it, right? And it was like, well, how are you going to do it? Because we're not coming in tomorrow at 8 o'clock, and you're going to be up, you know, almost 26, 27 hours, right? I was like, don't worry about it. I'll do it, right? So that night by myself, I put in about 100, 150 turkeys. I cooked them. I made all this dressing. I made all this uh, 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 gravy. I was tired. I was exhausted. You know, and I don't know if you, you if, if anyone out there has ever been tired. You get so tired, you become drunk, right? You, you become disoriented, right? You become lethargic. You know, you, you, you become disassociated. Right. I stood that whole night, doctors, uh, nurses, uh, 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 janitors, everybody came into the cafeteria. I had one person, one dishwasher with me and we fed everybody in that cafeteria. Then before everybody came in the next day, we set up the cards so turkey dinners could go out to everybody that day. And then we did the special meals for people on renal diets and whatever. Right. But if it wasn't for my experience, in the military that made me be able to push through all that exhaustion, I wouldn't have done it. I wasn't a Superman. I wasn't anybody special. I really didn't want to do that, but I knew everybody else wanted to go home and I wanted to go home, but I figured, you know, at least it was my duty to do that since I was one of the chefs in the place to give my people some time off. But that's what success is. Success is being able to push through, to persevere. And then I was reading the history about success in America. How did we get this idea about success had to do with the material work? You know, and it happened that, you know, after World War II, everybody came up with this idea of the American dream, right? At first, it used to be that you come to America, you can push west, you can find different land, different, even though most of the poor settlers that push west. They ended up dying because all the big cattle ranchers and stuff like that would either kill them or push them off or they get kill killed by Native Americans. So that was a phony, you know, when when uh, Ned Bentline said, go west, young man, go west, 
that was a that was another dream. But that was the the, the American dream then to go west, to find land, to to make a life for yourself, to make a life for your family. That was the American dream, right? And then you know came the robber barons of the 1870s, the 1880s, the 1890s, where you had gross inequality like we have now, where the rich were getting richer and the poor was poor. You went all the way through the, the good times in the 20s, then 1929, you had the, the Great Depression and the stock market crash. A lot of rich people jumped out of a lot of windows. I mean, I don't know how that felt about window washing, but you know, they all <laughs> jumped out and stuff like that. And then the next thing you happened, it was a chicken in every pot. You know, and people were trying to figure out how they were going to make it, you, you know, during the Great Depression. The Great Depression ended because a war came. If the war wouldn't have came, World War II wouldn't have came, we probably would have had the, world, the Great Depression a lot longer. But, but not because it put a lot of women to work because men had to go out and fight the war, right? It put a lot of pro, a lot of production started up because we had to convert factories and build planes and tanks and ammunition. My mother was talking about the time where they had a lipstick factory and it turned the lipstick factory into a bullet making factory. And I didn't think about that, but then if you looked at the lipstick back then, you could see how you know it became shell casings and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I understand it now, right? When you're telling me that when I was a child. So success changed after everybody came back from World War II. What changed success was because of the GI Bill. Because after World War I, when they promised all the veterans um, a, a bond and a bonus, and they didn't give it to them, and then they had Douglas McCarthy in the 30s shoot him and clear him out of the park like Trump almost did uh, uh, it, during, during the 20, 2020 uh, mm -hmm. uh, pandemic. But, but what they did was they said, no, we can't have all these soldiers coming back and they, we don't give them a way of making a living. So they came out with the GI Bill, which was a great thing. I went to school on GI Bill, God bless it, right? And so they started building suburbs. They started letting all these soldiers was able to go to school. They were able to move into a higher class. They wouldn't happen to be laborers or stuck on the farms, whatever. They could become lawyers. They could become doctors. They could become teachers. They become actors. They could do whatever they wanted to do. And they moved out to these nice communities and they built families because they had to replenish humanity that had been devastated by World War II and sometimes by World War I for the last, uh, last 20 years. So that's how then all of a sudden success became how far you can rise. You know, they, they had this, this book came out, The Man in the Gray Vinyl Suit, about corporate America and how you can, you know, do the machination, how you can move farther, farther up. So it all became the rat race, you know, because America was the last economy standing. There was a lot of there was a lot of success in moving through corporations and, and because we we had no competition. So success became about materiality. You know, yeah, me and my neighbor live in the suburbs and we got the same kind of house. But you know what? I got a better job, so I was able to build a bigger house somewhere else. So success became about materiality. It became about how big my car was, you know, how blind my wife's hair was, how big her boobs were, how many kids I had, right? You know, how, what country club I belonged to. You know, it all became about how much stuff I had in America. Instead of how can I raise my children to be good citizens? There you go. How can I be a good citizen? How can I live a good and right and justice life? You know, years ago, back in ancient Greece, they tried to say, what makes a good person? And Aristotle came up with virtue, character, being good. As Socrates said, to know good is to do good, right? That's what being success. Greeks, all the ancient Greeks used to say, the only way that you can tell a man's life is sort of like what Mark was saying, is when he dies. And you look back over the whole totality of his life. Then you can tell if he lived a successful life. It wasn't if he died and had a billion dollars. You know, Steve Jobs died and he had as much money than I ever have in my life. But when he died, he died just like I'm going to die, but naked and broke because you can't take it with you, right? What make people rem remember you long after you've gone? It's the things that you've done and the people that you helped. It's how people remember you. 
The loneliest man in the world is the man who goes to his grave and all alone and has nobody to weep over and nobody to cry over. That is the loneliest man in the world. That's not success. You know, if you remember the, the, um, the movie Citizen Kane, right? When Kane died, he had nobody to cry for him. Everybody was glad he died. He was rich, but he was only rich in materiality. You know, but he was poor in spirit. Yeah. You know, and we must humble ourselves to understand what true success is. It doesn't have anything to do with material success. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, no, you said, oh, it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things. Um, I, I just wanted to make a, a couple points on, on what you said. Um, you you became successful as a result of the, the experiences you had, you know, in cooking at the hospital and in your military service. So if you compare who you were when you were young to who you are now, you know, you can see that that track of success, the the improvement and the increase in the strength, your mental strength and your perseverance. And I think that's important, too, because that's another way of defining success. And as you were sitting there talking about family and stuff, it was making me think. And, and I just wanted to, to say this is that one group of people who are successful and may not think that they are successful are single parents because you have spent years raising children and you know working your tail off in order to be able to provide for them you are a success because you developed the perseverance and the fortitude to stay the course and and help your kids you may not have been able to provide them as much as you wanted but look you got them through and so you're a success and i think that's something that people need to hear because they don't hear it all the time because they define success as materiality. But you can be successful in any number of ways, and a lot of them are in regards to relationships. Also, too, just one little point about this pyramid and the stones you put in the pyramid. Mm -hmm. Everything you do as an individual com contributes to a community pyramid. So the, the good you do for other people the developing you do for children, whether it's your own or kids in the neighborhood or in the community, you know, you put stones in that pyramid and you're building a community pyramid for success in the community. And success can be defined not necessarily, you know, in terms of materiality and business and, and power and authority and stuff. It's defined in what you do in the family. You can be successful in your family. You can be successful in your neighborhood. You can be successful at your school, at your work. You can be successful, you know, in your local town or community. And um, you can be successful in all these different walks of life. And you need to look at it in that regard. Um, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot broader thing than what people think. And I think Jabril laid it out pretty well as how it's kind of gone to materialism over the past few decades, that you can define it in many ways and you are successful if you think about it yourself and you compare yourself now, who you are now as to who you were a number of years ago. And are you stronger mentally? Do you have more perseverance than you did? Do you have more moral courage to be able to say things? And are you willing to participate instead of stand on the side and watch? So that's pretty cool, sorry. Go ahead, Jabril. And I was going to say that, you know, and it doesn't matter the job that you have, if you're janitor or if you're CEO, right? Everything has its worth and everything has its 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 place in society. And you are where you're supposed to be. And all the thing is for you to enjoy where you're at and have fun where you're at and try to live a good life. And that's all it's all about, you know. It's not about what title you have. You know, it took me a long time to be comfortable with people calling me chef because I thought my it was, my ego would just try to absorb that title too much. But, you know, I found out they weren't saying it because, you know, for an ego reason. They were saying it because out of respect. So no matter what your title is, always remember you're a human being and that success comes with persevering through failure and through hard times. Very good. And that's All right. Good. And and with that, that's the end of the podcast. And thank you for listening.
and we'll talk to you later. Right.